Welcome to the podcast. If you'd like to listen to an ad-free version of this episode and all of our episodes, then search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. That's our premium channel where all of our ad-free and advanced episodes live all in one place. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Search it on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. Even try it for three days free. The blood washed away, but the guilt never does. Welcome to Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi, featuring psychotherapist and author Siobhan Scott. Let's talk about grooming. Let's talk about uh, Diddy's influence on younger people. I mean, he had television shows about it, making the yeah. band, the band, all that, where it's young, up-and-coming people that have some talent that uh, he essentially grooms and teaches how the industry works. We're seeing uh, accusations come up from the group Denity Kane. Um, we are also suspecting uh, allegations from others that have not necessarily come forward yet. But there's been some very suspicious reporting um, that's been done. The Post put out a piece a couple of weeks ago uh, talking about uh, the individual who is supposedly the A-list celebrity in this video. Uh, that uh, is, is not going to be good for this celebrity. Talking about how ashamed uh, they are, how they, they just want nothing to do with this person. They want to move on from that time in their life. They feel like they were a victim as well. It goes on and on. It does not name the person. But then you turn the page and you read a story about a man named Justin Bieber, who also was a child uh, at the uh, time when Diddy started hanging out with him. The Post also points out that it's questionable. It was in the video if the person was of age at the time, which starts to make people wonder uh, about mm -hmm. this. And again, Justin Bieber's accused Diddy of nothing. He doesn't want much to do with him. He's just trying to live his own world. So we're not saying that it's him in the video. But there are some very interesting correlations because he's saying a lot of the same things. According to his friends, wants to be away. Feels like he's being victimized again by these accusations coming out. Um, there's a lot there. It sounds like the mm -hmm. same story. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it is. I don't know. But um, him, insert anybody here who could be young uh, and have been victimized by Diddy, groomed from a very young age to think mm -hmm. this is how the lifestyle mm -hmm. is. This is how it works. You're a superstar now. You can take advantage of it. All these women are for you. All this, these cars, mm -hmm. this money, this wealth. And if you mm -hmm. don't know any better, from 14 on up, you're being taught this is how it works. Um, mm -hmm. And if he's in these videos... I guess it's going to depend what's going on in these videos, mm -hmm. but I believe, you know, this person is probably just as much a victim of, of Diddy oh, as well, much. if yeah. especially they were that young, but yeah. what if they were in these videos doing illegal things, uh, violating other people that they should not have been, but this is all they knew. I mean, one could argue if they were of age, you're an adult, you know, better, but we're not, that's not really what we're talking about here. We're talking about someone mm -hmm. who is, brought up in this weird bubble of Diddy. Yeah. How would you yeah. know better? You know, I mean, w w when we talk about that, when we talk about who may come forward like this, whether it's Bieber, again, we don't know anything if there is, but it's somebody of that nature, of a high stature, that was young. How do we handle something like that? How do you think that that should be handled in terms of a court of law? Um, you know, if you were abused like this and then go on to, to do similar things. Again, not saying he did, yeah. Just pure speculation. How does that get handled? Yeah, and that's where I think often the legal system, we don't really have a good process for how do we sort that out. Mm -hmm. And it's really up to the district attorneys, what they choose to do with it. And, uh, you know, at this point, who knows, because we don't have enough evidence to to really call it. So we don't really know what what's out there. Um, it's horrifying. And, and, you know, the thing that it speaks to me of is this other other construct called the dark triad. Mm -hmm. And that's when you get a combination of personality traits that's a very dangerous person. And we often talk about cluster B, but this is a, a different but similar construct. And the dark triad is traits within a person where you have um, narcissism, and we talk about that all the time, the sense of being grandiose, being special, using other people for their own in intents and purposes. And then you have Machiavellianism, which is somebody who's very manipulative. And when you think of someone who can bring other people into their fold and into their behavior, um, that sounds very Machiavellianism. And again, it's to serve their own ego needs. And then you throw in psychopathy with that. And that's a person without a conscience, without any 
ethics or integrity. And, and all three of those traits together are really, really, um, well, they're just evil. It's yeah. just an awful kind of person. And so when I hear about all this grooming, I mean, this is this is sort of in that dark triad category. Yeah. It's like somebody who's just really dangerous. And that's that's what this looks like here. So I think we have to take that into account when we look at young people who have been brought up in this the extent of that victimization, it, it can it extend past age 18? Sure, it can. And so I think we need to, to look at that. Whether the legal system allows us to do that is another story. Sure. I mean, age is just a number when it comes to that. Psychological yeah. development, grooming. It, it, just because you turn 18 doesn't mean you're suddenly like, oh, I'm wise now beyond my ears. Exactly. Um, yeah. it, it's. I mean, it's really disturbing just trying to think about what you know he, he might have done uh, to these people, when you talk about the the dark triad, is that something that people are, you know, if they have it, they've always been like that. They've always had, that, or, or is it something where I kind of got one edge of the triangle going pretty solid over here, and as they continue to develop those traits, well, we kind of move over here, and then we add the other part of the dark dark triad, a, a dark piece of the triangle into it, and then we eventually have the dark triad. Or is this someone who's always kind of been there, but as more power increases? Well, then so does the power of the dark triad. Yeah, they get bold. They get yeah. bold. And I think it's someone who's always had those tendencies. And these these are tendencies that, you know, are are starting to develop at seven, eight, nine years old, you know, because we certainly see in in normal people who develop empathy, they have empathy. They care about other people at really early age. I mean, that starts to develop in preschool. So this is a person where something just really went off kilter early on. They've probably got some biological differences that make them more vulnerable to it. And then the way they're raised by their parents, they get away with stuff. They manipulate the parents. They manipulate people in school and they just get really good at it. And then, yes, as they succeed in society and they gain more wealth and power, they they really get bold and it can take off. And it really sounds like what we're dealing with here. Somebody that has this much power and is this innately off. I mean, it's just, it's really sickening. It is, it is. And it seems that it just keeps getting deeper and darker by the day. And then I should mention, too, that just as there's a, a dark triad, there's a light triad. And Ooh. that's somebody who's who's adept with empathy, compassion, and altruism. And, you know, the person that pops into my head that we see so much about in the media now because he's, you know, 100 years old is Jimmy Carter. Sure. And, you know, somebody that is just always known for caring about people, being compassionate, and then taking his fame out into the world to try to do good. And, of course, when we talk to parents, these are the qualities we want to see kids grow up with, you know, in a, in a positive society, you want it filled with light triad people. Are the light triad people easy prey for the dark triad people? Um, it certainly could work that way. Yes. Because if you're a person who has a lot of empathy, you expect the rest of the world to treat you the way you treat them. Mm -hmm. And often that's not the case. And so I think, yeah, in, in ra going back to raising kids, we do want to teach them that this is the way we want to behave, but not everybody is like this. And you do have to be careful. Welcome to the podcast. If you'd like to listen to an ad-free version of this episode and all of our episodes, then search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. That's our premium channel where all of our ad-free and advanced episodes live all in one place. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Search it on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. Even try it for three days free. You're in the thick of a true crime saga, every detail sinking in, and then, wham, a commercial about something you couldn't care less about. It's like being served a microwaved dinner at a five-star restaurant. But it doesn't have to be this way. Go for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. With True Crime Today Premium Plus, you get uninterrupted, ad-free episodes, extended interviews that dig even deeper into the muck, and early access so you can brag to your friends. It's like ordering the secret menu at a crime buffet. So, search for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts, subscribe, and savor every twisted detail without interruption.